This video will cover Live Action's PFR version 3 capabilities. So here's Live Action's topology view, and it's very familiar to many different ones. Uh, it's broken up in this particular case for PFR version 3 into multiple sites. So let me help you get your bearings as far as what you're seeing in this particular topology representation. On the left-hand side, you're, you'll notice Palo Alto is the hub site for this PFR domain. It's made up of multiple devices. In this case, Palo Alto has uh, separate master controllers, which is separate from its border routers. Uh, one border router here going off to ISP1, and then the second border router being controlled at the Palo Alto hub site going off to ISP2. Now, there's two remote branches in this particular scenario, one going off to Los Angeles, and that's represented by this collapsed MCBR pair, or master controller and border router pair. Both of those functionalities are converged into this one device. Likewise is it the case for this particular router out in New York, which represents branch number two. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's two service providers that's managing the traffic for this PFR domain for this enterprise. And that's ISP1, as you see at the northern path here, and then ISP2 at the southern path down below. Now, for this particular scenario, PFR version 3 has a policy to protect primarily a voice class marked EF, as well as a video class marked AF31. So in our search string, we're actually looking very specifically at our various sites from Palo Alto, zooming in on traffic to and from Los Angeles for those particular markings of EF and AF31. Now, for the expert users, perhaps you may want to have a good understanding of what's going on on the device level without having to bring up the show commands for PFR version 3. By simply double clicking on a device, we're going to bring you into the device view or the real-time report for this particular device. At the moment, we're looking at all flow types. So this includes flexible net flow, which gives you application information like RTP and Skype and various other things, but also PFR specific data as well. Let's zoom in specifically on PFR's data. I'm going to pause this for a second and notice that we're getting a lot of updates directly from the PFR process. In this case, we're getting various record types, for example, understanding bandwidth and understanding what's ingressing and also potentially egressing this particular device. Now, using this real-time device view, you can actually get a much better understanding of the performance metrics that are coming in, whether it be one-way delay or inner arrival jitter values and so forth. Even if there's a threshold crossing alert scenario, we're going to be able to see that in real time in this particular view. Now, that could be a lot simpler than, than actually going into the router and typing a bunch of show commands. For example, if you do a show domain one master channels, this is actually going to give you some information about the various channels being controlled by PFR. But looking at this data within NetFlow, we'll actually see things in real time without actually having to go to the command line. Now, this might be very good for the expert user. But let's take a look back at that topology. We're able to understand at a very high level the traffic path for these various markings uh, or those application groups represented by EF traffic in blue and purple traffic uh, for AF31 um, particular traffic classes. Now, to get a better understanding of how PFR is actually working, we created a dashboard uh, specifically for PFR version 3. Now, let me bring up that dashboard. As you can see, we have many different uh, pieces of data that we can get. Full system information, QoS specific dashboard data, flow specific to understand what kind of alerts we're getting, top 10 source and destination countries and so forth. But for PFR version 3, we're looking very specifically at how PFR version 3 is working and performing. Live Action has a rich capability for understanding uh, semantics within the network.
for example, we're able to allow the user to identify sites that are important, uh, service provider links as well, uh, along with capacity of those service provider WAN connections. So using that semantics, we're actually able to populate this PFR version 3 dashboard with information that's very key to understanding your own network, especially from a WAN perspective and a PFR v3 perspective as well. Now this dashboard is broken up into four primary areas that will help you understand PFR. That's alerts, sites, application groups, and service provider. Now, you could read this dashboard basically from left to right to really understand the story of PFR. If you're looking specifically at global alerts within the PFR domain, look first at this top column for all alerts and top 10 alerts by site pair. Now, for example, if you're trying to troubleshoot specific site capabilities and what traffic is going over those sites, look at it from this site row perspective. And from this site row perspective, we're gonna break it up into those various components. For example, alerts by site, utilization by application group at that site level, and then also the site's utilization by the service provider. So we're slicing and dicing this data based off of those four primary areas. Again, alerts, sites, application group, and service provider. Now, let's see how a first tier or even a second tier or, or others are able, uh, support personnel is able to use Live Action's PFR dashboard to better understand what's going on in their domain. Now, let's take a look at two examples. Let's first take a look at top 10 alerts by site pair. Now, notice that from Los Angeles to Palo Alto, we're actually getting various uh, alerts coming in. First off, this yellow uh, color indicates that there's delay uh, thresholds that are being crossed for or, or alerting. Also, this light blue or cyan color is because of an unreachable event that occurred. Now, let's zoom in deeper to understand what's going on from Los Angeles to Palo Alto. Now, any one of these widgets within the dashboard can be clicked on and automatically bring up a correlating report. Now, here's that alerts by site pair report. Now, Los Angeles is showing up as the top site to site uh, communication where there's a lot of alerts coming in. So from Los Angeles to Palo Alto. Now, notice that the types of alerts is shown up as well. So we're seeing a lot of delay alerts for this site-to-site -site communication, as well as some areas where it, there could be an unreachability issue as well. So let's drill down uh, on this row to get a better understanding of what's really happening from this Los Angeles perspective. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click, drill down on this particular flow, and I'm gonna, let's take a look at it from an application group perspective. Which applications are actually being affected by these alerts coming in? So I'm gonna drill down to alerts by application group for the Los Angeles area. Now notice that the various application groups are voice and video. These are the primaries that are being controlled by PFR version three. There's also a policy for best effort traffic, but we're not so worried about that. But notice for the voice application, we're actually seeing that these this is where we're seeing the delay issues that could be causing PFR to kick into action. Now, the question may arise then, did PFR, was PFR actually able to correct the issue or was it uncorrectable? By right clicking, you can drill down again on this specific flow and let's look at the corrected versus uncorrected report. And notice for this period of time, the vast majority of instances PFR version 3 was able to kick in and reroute these traffic classes for both voice and video to correct and mitigate the problem. Okay. Now let's take a look at another area where PFR version 3 and live action could be used to better understand, for example, site utilization. So we're going to look at that site row and let's zoom in specifically on site utilization by application group.
Now, we spoke earlier about PFR version 3, this particular policy, primarily focusing on the protection of voice and video. So at the Los Angeles site, we're seeing a good split between voice and video applications. Now again, to get further details, just click on the widget heading, and that'll bring up the report. So here's the site capacity utilization by application group that corresponds to that particular widget. Now notice we're seeing for each site, the various application groups and the utilization of those application groups on a site-by-site -site basis. So for Los Angeles, the voice application group is taking up about 2% utilization of its WAN links. Also for Los Angeles, there's a video class and that's taking up just, just shy of 2% of the bandwidth. Now let's be, take a look further to get a better understanding of how Los Angeles is distributing these various application groups to its service provider links. So we can do that by right clicking and let's drill down on this specific flow and look at it from an application group by a service provider perspective. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this report. We're just gonna look at it in a different dimension. Yeah. So for Los Angeles, these application groups are going over ISP1 primarily and then also we have information uh, as a secondary link, it's going over ISP2. But the vast majority of the traffic between EF traffic and AF31 is going over service provider one. Now, we can further get a better understanding of what applications are really writing over these particular links using Cisco's NBAR. Uh, capabilities. So let's right click again and let's take a look at it in a different dimension by looking at it from an application perspective. Okay. So we're bringing up the application report and we're zooming in on Los Angeles as well as ISP1. Okay. So at the Los Angeles site using ISP1 we're seeing primarily RTP traffic going over that link. So that RTP traffic is really that voice or that video type traffic. Now let's zoom in a little bit further and just see how the DSCP markings are actually, uh, which DSCP markings are making up this RTP traffic. Now is it, does it correlate to the application groups that we talked about? So let's zoom down one more time and we'll go to a DSCP report. So again, for the Los Angeles site on ISP1. Let's zoom in on the RTP protocol and look at it from a DSCP perspective. So going over Los Angeles ISP1 for RTP traffic, the markings are EF and AF31. So with live action, the end user, whether it be an expert user or maybe a first or second tier support personnel is able to really dive in very deeply to get a better understanding of how the WAN is performing and PFR version 3 is actually able to correct issues that may be coming up in the enterprise. 